Welcome to another flower painting class. The brush does the work. First of all, get a puddle of alizarin crimson. On a small piece of 140 pound watercolor paper, I like arches. Any paper of good quality will work. I'm just using a Robert Simons pointed brush, maybe about a number six, and I touch it. Once you've put the puddle down, you want to play with it. You want to get rid of some of the paint in the brush and then wiggle it and pull it. Pull it towards you. Now, if you don't like, it's easier to work in different directions by turning your paper. Add a little water to your brush. Tap it again. Now we're using a damp brush. And what we're doing is pulling the paint out of the puddle. Now, the, this one will be a little bit lighter because I'm adding water to it. Every time you add water, it gets lighter. You can see on the right how we can apply this method. And we'll be doing this at the end, uh, near the middle of the class, so uh, don't hang up, <laughs> as we used to say. Stay with me here and learn some skills with your brush, and then we're going to apply them into a little painting. So to make petals, you can do different shapes with your puddle. You can see on the um, paper how I'm coming more from the middle of that little puddle this time. Wiggle and pull. I'm going to pull this one a long way. I'm going to see how far I can get and then lift the brush at the end and you get a long petal or you could do this in green for leaves. So I get a little more paint, touch it, a little water, and now with the full strength paint, I'm going to pull it. Look at my fingers moving there. Now I pull it. When you're wiggling, your fingers are moving, and when you're pulling, your arm is moving. You're pulling it from the elbow and the shoulder. I'm going to soften the edges now. A good little habit to get into when you're doing flowers is soften the edges unless you want a hard edge. So we're going to drop in some paint now. First I wet the paper, then I give it a little dash of alizarin crimson. Look at how it disperses. It spreads out. Now we're going to do it with ultramarine and phthalo blue. They spread also. Certain pigments will spread well and some will not. Just by experimenting, you'll find out. We're going to mix some neutrals now. And neutral is really easy. You just take the three primaries, red, yellow, and blue, and mix them up. You can go a little slower than I'm going right now, but uh, nothing more boring than watching someone mix paints. So here we go. Two brown. It's a neutral. Browns are neutral colors. They're not pure. And we add a little more phthalo and I get the gray I want. It's a blue gray. Okay, watch my hand here. The paper's still damp. I have my neutral and I'm twisting the brush with my fingers around that pure color, alizarin crimson, and watch what comes out. Isn't that amazing? That gray or neutral has made the red sing. Here we're going to be doing the pull stroke. You see, long flowing stroke with the neutral brown. So now I'm putting the brown on, brown neutral next to the red, which um, is actually good because there's a lot of red in brown and those two colors go well together. Now this is an experiment here. You're just experimenting with your colors. You're just playing with them. I'm leaving a lacy edge around everything. That's reminiscent of the English watercolor artists in the 17th and 18th century. Here's that little pull stroke again with a little wiggle on the brush. So that's a good way to get a just a flat wash or a graded wash. 
more ultramarine I'm using here, which is a very warm blue. Cobalt is a cold blue and phthalo is kind of in the middle. So this is a swipe stroke. Just get a little swipe. See the paper's wet, then dotting it in. Lots of ways to add paint into a wet area. So I'm being aware of different edges, dry edges and wet edges. Here comes burnt sienna. Burnt sienna is an earth color, so it has a lot of granulating texture to it. And, uh, but it's a vibrant color. Get some more and drop it in full strength. Swipe it, drop it. As long as the paper is wet, it will mix by itself. Okay, we're now ready for our little flower picture. So we get another piece of paper, 140 pound arches, cold press. Put your little puddle, tap it. Just a, a simple little brush, probably a number, about number seven. And you look at that puddle, you know, you know what we're going to do. We're going to take the point of the brush, push it down, and a little different than before, we're going to wiggle it out while we push it down. And then that's it. That's the first try. You will have to do a few of these before you get the technique. And I'm going to show you how even if you don't get one of the petals right, we'll fix it in a moment. So the first two, it's getting too light now. See, not enough paint, but I'm just going to leave it there because we can do something to it in a moment. And here we go again. Once again, not enough paint. One of the biggest things for watercolorists is not using enough paint when they need enough paint. Sometimes we don't use any paint hardly at all. Sometimes we need more paint. So here we go. We're going to try the second time. We make the puddle. And we add more water because there's more paint in the puddle. The puddle had more paint. We just touch it and the paint flows to where the paper is wet. Let's get a little more alizarin crimson and we're going to fix our flowers up. We need more paint, so we put another puddle in the middle. Now the paper's still damp, so that will spread. A little more. Still using, oh, it's a number five. Robert Simons, not a six, not a seven, a five. Now I add a little water now and there's a little crimson left in the brush. Notice how that, it's remarkable how watercolors actually look exactly transparent like petals. Here comes more alizarin crimson right in the middle. Now that's really taking shape. Another one here. And notice how it's spreading on the one on the right and the left. So two different looking flowers, basically the same technique. Now we're going to do the wiggle pull stroke that you learned a few minutes ago. Look at that little line between the petal and the middle on the first one. I like that little line. Next, we're going to soften the edge. Remember, we just did that a couple minutes ago. We're going to soften the edges on all of them. Just sucking up a little bit of that moisture there and spreading it out, adding the little decorations on them. Decorate your flowers. Now, Claude Monet showed that yellow-orange is the opposite of violet. So we're going to add a beautiful little yellow right in here because the alizarin crimson has a violet look to it. I don't know about you, but I see a little purple in the alizarin crimson. So this yellowy green is perfect. 
decorate your flower. Nature does, why can't we? It's the little things with flowers that make them stand out. There we go. So mix a little bit of green up, your favorite green. And this is a little stroke with the baby finger resting on the paper. You're holding your brush and you're going to pull the brush down with a quick little pulling motion. And start slow and then end up fast. The ragged edge comes from the tooth of the paper, meaning the roughness of the paper. And you can go slowly if you want. You can soften all those edges on there. It's just a great technique for getting the greenery into your flowers. A nice, good, strong blue right in the middle. And look at how it, um, the paper dry, when the paper dries, the colors really diffuse out more. There's my little watercolor sheet, checking the colors. We're going to match the color of the begonia at the top of the screen. So a cadmium yellow light with a cadmium red light or medium, and you have the exact color. Now remember with the Monet picture, the orange yellow really goes well with violet. Now I'm not trying to do some masterpiece painting here. I'm just showing you some good color sense. F studying flowers is your best uh, color tool in the world. Flowers are perfectly matched with opposite or complementary colors, neutrals. They're an amazing little natural phenomena that most people just don't look at often enough. You can learn a lot about painting, studying nature, especially flowers. So I go all the way around with my little sable brush, leaving a lacy edge. See the white is left all the way around? It creates a beautiful little effect. You can come as close as you want to it. And the paper's dry, so that little wash that is flat is moving all the way around. We're putting everything together here that we learned in our exercise. A little more touching up there. So here we go, we're going to take some more of that orange and drop it into the wet paper. Don't do this unless the paper has at least received a little bit of dampness from the wash. But I like that sort of variegated look. Okay, now you take some water, wet up that little drop of whatever it is, neutral color, add some cadmium red to it, and work it into the paper. So this is one of those things that happens that actually improves your painting because it's too orange on the left and too light on the right. So now I've committed to another light wash. Look at that sparkly lacy edge. John Singer Sargent, you can look him up, was a great watercolorist and he used the lacy edge all the time. It's not used too often anymore, but let's bring it back. I think it gives a certain vibrancy to the painting. So here we go, we just added water. So we're getting a graded wash and there we go. Uh, I'm liking what I see. And like I say, this is an exercise. This is something that you would work on and get better at and then do your own painting. Maybe you might like try the orchid or loose and free flowers. Just look around my courses and thanks for joining me and I hope to see you soon.